Hi, I'm Father Thomas, and welcome to Monk Works. And this is Get Woodworking Week 2014. It's an annual event started by Tom Iovino over at Tom's Workbench. And it's an opportunity for woodworkers to encourage and share their passion for woodworking with other people who have not been introduced to it. And so I'd like to take this opportunity then to show you how with a limited set of tools, uh, something as simple as a, as a saw, a drill, and some leftover 2x4, and a few things that you can pick up at your local hardware store, such as some threaded rods, you'll be able to make then one of those essential elements for all woodworkers then is the clamp. way to cut your 2x4 down into the 12 inch segments that we need is with a chop saw. However, this being Get Woodworking Week, we're looking for ways that we can do this with a minimal number of tools or tools that most people would have around the house. A quick effective way of doing that is to get one of these miter boxes. You can pick up a miter box if you don't have one at your local home store relatively inexpensively. And it's very simple to use. Put your wood into the miter box Make sure everything is butted up against the back fence, which is your straight angle, to make sure you have that 90 degrees. Since we've got a little bit longer piece here, I do have just a small piece of scrap that's holding it up so that we don't have this up and down action while we're trying to make our cut. Now, if you don't have a miter box, but you do have a saw, you can still get fairly consistent cuts. All you need to do is take a scrap piece of wood and simply then attach it to the side of your workbench. You can then just take your saw, line it up to the outside edge of your line that you had marked, Now that we have our nice straight edge to reference off of, we can then measure out for our 12 inch pieces. And then simply make our next cut. pieces to the proper length, we want to get them to the proper height. So we want to measure out then two and a quarter inches and make a mark and go to the other end and find two and a quarter and make another mark. And then we're going to take just any straight edge that we have, this happens just to be a cut off piece that is straight, line up our two marks and then simply draw our line and that'll be the line that will follow as we're cutting. It would be very difficult for us to be able to cut this long line straight if we were cutting it in this way as the way we were cutting then the cross grain. In order to make it easier then we're going to lift the wood up in a vertical position so that then we're able to cut the question then becomes, well, how is it then that we're going to hold this wood in a vertical position for us to cut? And actually, it's the same method that we use to cut it along the horizontal. We're going to take our same piece of wood that we had as a stop against our workbench.
I'm placing a mark three quarters of an inch from the bottom of the jaw. That's going to be where the 45 degree angle is going to begin. And I want to do that on both pieces. And then I'm just roughly marking out the direction that the cutting is going to go so I can keep everything properly oriented. I went ahead and wrapped the jaws together with some painter's tape, which is a good tool to have around the shop, uh, so that I can make sure that both the length and the angles are the same on both pieces. And then I'm lining it up in the miter box at the setting for the 45 degrees. And I'm making sure then as I'm putting it in there and lining it all up, I'm lining it up with that three quarter inch tick mark that I made a little bit earlier. jaws of my clamp, I can tell that they're pretty flat, or they're flat enough for what it is that they're going to be used for, but if you are worried about whether or not your bottom is flat, there's a quick trick that you can use in order to do that. So simply take a piece of sandpaper and tape it down to your workbench. And then simply take one of your jaws Place it on the sheet of pan sandpaper and just rub back and forth on it. You want to put even pressure so that you're not building one side up greater than the other. And then do the same with the other. And keep doing that until you don't see any significant gaps between the two jaws of your clamp. The next step of our process is to take the two jaws of the clamp and then drill the holes in them in order to accept the rods that we're going to be using uh, that are going to pull them together. And one of the easy ways to do that is we want to make sure then if this rod needs to be able to go through both of them, we want then the holes to line up with one another. And so it's easier to do that if we put then the two jaws together and then make our drills, uh, and then make our holes. An easy way for us to do that is to take some of this carpet tape or double-sided tape and then put a strip of it along the base of one of the jaws. Press that down. And then we will simply line everything up. Make sure it's nice and flush in the back. So. And then we just put some pressure on it and that will activate the tape. Now if you don't have any of the carpet tape, uh, you can get some regular painter's tape. You can wrap that around uh, to hold it all together. When it comes to drilling, we have a couple of different options. Most people will be uh, familiar with spade bits, and you can use a spade bit in order to do that. In order to make it just a little bit cleaner of a cut, though, I'm going to be using one that I'm going to be using a Forstner bit. Uh, but you most certainly can be able to do that with your typical spade bit. Now, now that we have everything marked, we're ready to begin drilling. One of the things you want to do is on the crosshairs, whether we're using then a paddle bit or whether we're using the Forstner bit, we want to make sure that the nip of the bit fits directly in our crosshairs. And it's going to be important then that we make sure that we have our drill as close as we can to a 90 degree angle as we're drilling. Now I'm starting out with a three quarter inch bit on my drill. 
The rods we're going to be using are half inch rods, but we need to inset a bolt into the top. And the bolt is just a little bit bigger than three quarters of an inch. And that'll be fine because we'll be able to seat it down into the wood itself with a little bit of force and then keep it there with some epoxy. We've gone down the depth of a nut. We're going to put our other half drill bit in and drill through the one side. Now we're going to repeat that procedure, not on this hole here, but on the one that would be directly opposite on this side. At this stage then, we can separate the two halves we drilled deep enough in order that it would make it through to the other side. Now the carpet tape is pretty difficult to pull apart. It's so sticky, so it takes a little bit of pressure, okay? And as you can see then, we have a little divot here, and we have a little divot here, which tells us then where we can continue drilling at this point. I'm repeating the process of drilling with the thicker bit first, though this time I'm using a 7 8 inch drill bit. Uh, the purpose for the larger bit is now we want the bolts to be able to freely turn inside of there as part of our screw mechanism. I'm also drilling down twice the depth for those bolts because we're putting two of them together in order to lock them. And then I'm going back then again with the half inch bit all the way through. And I put a piece of scrap wood underneath so that when it does break through on the other side, you have a much cleaner cut. And again, this is being done for both jaws. so that it's just easier to kind of hold and to be able to twist. Now, in order to attach this to the threaded rod, we need to drill a hole in the center. In order to find the center, I just simply make a line between the points on each side of our block. And then I'll be able to take my drill bit and then drill straight down in the middle. In order to drill the hole, this is not the type of procedure that we want to do just simply hold our workpiece and then take our drill and do our best to keep everything steady. It'd be much better to make sure then that this block of wood is secured. Now the easiest way to do this is with a drill press, but since this is Get Woodworking Week, we want to be able to do this without the, the need to have such an expensive tool. And we already have our homemade moxen vise. So once again, we'll attach our scrap piece of wood up against our workbench and secure our block in between. We have our handle then secure in our temporary moxen vise. Um, but we have one screw here and one screw all the way over here. In order just to add a little bit more secure, uh, in, order, in order to add a little bit more stability to it, even though it's, it's pretty, pretty solid in there, I'm going to go ahead and add one more screw uh, on the opposite side so it's got a little bit more biting power to it. Holding it in there nice and strong. Now it's 
time to attach the handle and in order to do that um, I'm going to take the jaw and the rod and also the handle and on the handle I just kind of knock those edges off a little bit on, on all four sides so they're not very sharp and it makes it easier to hold in the hand. All right. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is I'll take my threaded rod, I put uh, the nut on it to partially, okay, uh, and then on the side that has the, the bigger hole, I'll just slip that right in there, and then this is going to go on there. Now I've got maybe about an inch, all right, that's a little more than I want, um, so I'm just going to tighten my nut up a little bit, measure it again, still a little, too, a little more than I want, so just a couple more twists, so that's about how I want it to be. Okay, so I'll pull then it out and kind of hold that in place as I put then the other nut on. Okay, now they're together. Now it's not going to stay that way forever, and so what we need to do then is tighten those against one another. I have my wrench, put it on one end, grab my pair of pliers, and then just simply press in opposite directions. Okay, alright, and so that's not going anywhere, alright, so basically remember this will pop on there, okay. Uh, before final assembly, I do want to give it a light sanding, and so I've got some 150 sandpaper and I have some 220 sandpaper. Um, now if you don't have a random orbit sander, you're just going to be sanding, and it might take a little bit of a while. Uh, I do have a random orbit sander, just, so just to speed up the process a little bit, that's what I'm going to use. Uh, but you can use hand sanding as well. Alright, <clears throat> now we've got everything. Uh, fairly smooth, or at least uh, smooth enough for what it is that we use it here in the shop. Uh, and so now it's time then to put it all uh, together. And to do that, we'll need our epoxy for attaching the handles to our rods. Okay. protection on it uh, so that you'll be able to use it for a long time. Now, it's got a lot of dust on it so we can't put anything directly onto it. So the first thing we need to do uh, is clean it off. And one of the things I like to use to clean it off is just some simple uh, denatured alcohol. And to do that, I just put a little bit on a rag and just basically wipe everything down. And what that's going to do is just take all the dust off of it more or less. And the nice thing about alcohol uh, is that it's going to dry very, very quickly. And so it won't take long before we'll be able to, uh, to put the finish on. Now you do want to make sure though that it's dry, um, at least to, uh, to the eye, uh, because what, what I'm going to be using to put on this uh, is shellac. Uh, I'm using shellac partially because I like shellac a lot, uh, but also I've got a couple of these little bitty cans with not a whole lot left in them. Uh, and so it's just a good way to kind of use, use up some of the uh, extra old finishes that I have lying around. My basic method uh, for applying for a shellac is just taking, uh, taking a rag and uh, folding it up. Uh, dipping it in the, the solution. In this case, uh, since there's not a whole lot left in here, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, use it out of the uh, out of the can because I'm not going to use the can afterwards. Uh, but you would you could just put it into a small bowl uh, and use that and dip from there. Shellac is alcohol-based, um, and so
so it dries pretty quickly as well. So we can get uh, a couple of coats on in a matter of a few hours. Uh, so we need to let this sit though, let it dry, and we'll come back to it and probably just put one more coat on. found an easy solution to clamping and I hope it's the beginning of a lot of woodworking projects for you. If you're a little bit more adventurous I invite you to click on the annotation right over here which hopefully will be up within the week uh, to a more challenging way of making this same type of clamp. If you enjoyed this video I encourage you to click the like button and also to consider subscribing to my channel to get other videos on woodworking as well on about a monthly basis. Again, thanks for watching, have fun doing woodworking, and as always, may God bless you.